Good afternoon and welcome to a very special Talks at Google. I am delighted to have the three principals from Wicked here. We've got Sophie Evans, who plays Glinda. Give it up for Sophie. So Sophie's mom is also here today, so we're very glad that everyone can see you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Alice Fern, who plays Alphaba. It was Alice's birthday yesterday, so we can maybe sing her happy birthday later. <laughs> and we've got Bradley Jaden, who plays Fierro. I don't have a fun fact about you, Bradley, so maybe you oh. can oh, fill one fun in. Fun fact. Uh, fun fact, exactly. Right, right, right from the get-go. Got really long hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So the way that today's event is going to work is we've got 45 minutes with the cast. Um, we'll open it up to questions halfway. As Rob said, there's a microphone in the middle, so please Get ready to go with your questions. I'll let you know when it's time to start moving there. Um, and then afterwards, there's the opportunity for some photos. Uh, we've got props at the back, which I think most of you already seen. Um, I'm really excited about today. So I'm going to start with a quick overview of, I guess, the Wizard of Oz universe. In 1900, Frank Baum wrote, write, writes a book. In 1939, we've got the famous film with Dorothy and Toto and her ruby red slippers. And then we flip to the witch's perspective in 1995 with the novel Wicked, the life's, uh, life and times of the Wicked Witch of the West, which turns into the musical that you all know and love, Wicked, the untold stories of the Witches of Oz. So first of all, these are some iconic characters and they have been originated by legends. Idina Mizell, uh, Kristen Chenoweth, who was in London recently, and I'd love to hear about what that was like. <laughs> but how do you work within the existing Wicked universe? How do you do this? How do you take these characters and really make them your own? I think it's, I think it's, sim I think for me anyway, it's quite simply you just, whenever I have ever played something that is iconic or has been played before by other people, I think you just go back to the book, the story, what was originally written. And I think you from there find your version of that person and, and why she reacts or he reacts in whatever ways you, from what you read and what you learn from that person. So. Um, I think then you're not controlled by people that have done it before or, or the way that they've played it. And in, and in fact, you, all you do is create your own version of, of them. And, um, and I think then they become very true. Um, I think they're very real. People can relate to that, that yeah. person quite well. So I think as long as you go back, you know, it's, it's, it's just go back to the script and go back to the words and what was written originally. And I don't think you can go that far wrong. I love it. With Kristen in the audience last yes. week. That was crazy <laughs> because as a um, teenager, she was the lady that I listened to singing popular and I wanted to be exactly like her. And with her being in the audience, I probably did put a few Kristen Chen with accents on everything because I just think the way she did it was fantastic. But yeah, like Alice said, it's, it's keeping everything that was there originally, but bringing yourself to the role as well because you don't want to see a carbon copy every single time you go and see a show. It's no, nice to certainly see a, not. someone's personality injected into the character. So what do you think you bring that's unique to the role? <laughs> um, I think I bring, I try to be really truthful. Um, I'm very clumsy in life in general, so I bring that kind of dictiness <laughs> to it quite naturally. So is, that, is that true, Mum? Yes. Yeah, okay. I fall, <laughs> I'm a baby giraffe, I fall over all the time, so that's great. Um, but yeah, keep keeping the truth of Glinda and um, everything is, it comes from a good place, even though something she yep. says might come across as a little bit catty or not quite what it seems, but it does always come from a truthful, good place. Amazing. And Bradley, you've worked in, so not only here in London, but you've actually been part of some of the international cast. So how do you, I guess, bring your truth to the role of you? I think, like, like Alice said, she answered it really well. Um, it's, I don't think trying to uh, replicate anyone else is going to do yourself justice or the piece. And you know, that we're very thankful that they, we are working with such an incredible uh, piece, both with lyrics and dialogue every night. So you know, as long as we are telling the story in our own way and telling it as truthfully as we possibly can, then you know, the job's pretty much halfway there. Of, of course, we have our own you know, little uh, touches, you know, me being, having long hair, I don't think that's happened before. And, uh, you know, <coughs> toss tosses. Yeah, you know, the, the toss tosses are, are slightly different now. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's about having fun and making sure you're telling the story and telling the truth. And you know, I think as, as long as you do do that, the audience are going to follow you, hopefully. So. I love that all three of you have touched on this idea of truthfulness, right? And being true to yourself, but also true to these characters. Um, I think they're tremendously nuanced characters, who, all, all of whom transform in a number of ways. Probably none more notable than your transformation, Bradley. Uh, you go from perhaps a bit vain and perhaps a bit unconcerned about anything. I think even Glinda, she might be a bit, <coughs> a bit vain, a bit scatty, but she's already has this heart. Whereas you start in a very different place. How do you, how do you manage that transition? Well, I, this is funny because I, I don't see Fiero as arrogant. I, see, I think that he has his own brand of cavalier and he has his kind of, you know, <laughs> he has his own ways, but he's so different from all the rest of the other people in Shears. And, but yeah. how do we know that he's not the same as where he is, you know, as other people from where he comes from, in, you know, in Winkyland? And they're all that kind of, that place. Yeah. in their life and he's just coming he's just like hey like, this is how this is how i am and i'm just quite relaxed and chilled and yeah, all these yeah. other people kind of go wow this is so different um and like you said he goes on a, on a massive journey and he you know turns up and he's never met uh women as powerful as these two and and i think he he learns so much about himself throughout the the show um and i think that's ex so exciting that uh you know he's challenged by these powerful women and he's taken on a journey that he can find the truth in himself. You know, I think he's, in a way, learned and grown up to be a certain way mm. through, I don't know, peer pressure or the way he's, you know, the society is, that to meet these, these women that can change his life and allow him to be that honest and that truthful to yeah. himself, that's exciting. And I think that's the tr that's the way I kind of want it to play. That he, that the audience can kind of say that, oh yeah, it's you know it's you're not you're not afraid to be to be open with your emotions and and to to go as far as you can and wear your heart on your sleeve. I love it, and I think, you know, perhaps I've made some unfair assumptions here. No, no, not at all. Like, <laughs> but, of course, it, every, I think everyone does always say it is arrogant because he does he turn up and he's. And he has that song, and you know, and he and he gets everyone to dance his way. But I think he's just carefree. I think he's just out out having a laugh, and he's just he doesn't want. He's not telling people you have to do this. There's no time he ever says you have to do it. He's just saying, let's just let's give it, let's just give it a go. Exactly, and I think there's a real. So I've made this I, just this mistake. Now I've made some assumptions about the character. But, <laughs> and I think one of the I think perhaps the most interesting thing things about Wicked is the fact that. We go to this world, we go to Oz, and we're making all kinds of assumptions. Mm -hmm. And the opening number, we're making assumptions about Glinda and the Good Witch, and Elfie, and the, who's the Wicked Witch of the West, and what does this mean uh, without actually knowing the background? Well, that's it, that's the whole show, is mm -hmm. that the, it's from that instant, if you're, you've made an assumption that exactly. Elphaba is a Wicked Witch, mm. and that's the whole point of the story, is to say your assumptions were completely, un, it, were completely wrong, exactly. and, and fueled by Gossip, propaganda, and propaganda, and yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the entire thing. Is that you do assume that Fiera is maybe vain, or you do assume that she's wicked, and you do you assume all those things, and actually that's that's the whole point. By the end of it, you go, wow, I I, I think I was completely wrong. And that's what I I go, sorry I go back because I get excited by this question when you are, you know, presume something. It's the same as the poster. When you look at the poster, in this day and age, you see wicked, and you see the green witch, and you see the white witch. But not one part of it does it say the good and the bad witch. Do you know what I mean? You, you could actually say, well, why is the the white witch whispering? That's a bad trait. Do you know what I mean? The green witch. You know why? Why is the green bad when you know in certain countries green is a lucky colour? You know why yeah, is wicked exactly. bad when in this day and age people wake up and you're like, oh, that's wicked. That's cool. So there's so many different. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like there's so many different things that you look at that potion and go. Why in the, in this part of our life do we see that as, as as a negative? As that green that green person is the negative, and that's what is is so exciting about Wicked that by the end of it, you have completely changed all your expectations. Absolutely, and in some of some of the posters, you can also the the white witch is not entirely visible either, right? So mm. you've got this really interesting moment where you think, well, what is going on? Yeah, we don't know. No idea what is going on. Um, and so, I think, what are you whispering? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a big question for Have me. You thought about what that? are yeah. you whispering? <laughs> so I, I would love to know the answer to that question. So I feel like <laughs> if there are any two people in the world who can answer that question, they're right here she on stage. Said, I'm, exactly. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Which is what we are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. absolutely starving at the end of that three hours. <laughs>
<laughs> I think that brings us to a slightly later question, which is how do you prepare? And how do you keep the energy for such um, a demanding run of shows? I like to not have any rituals or anything, because I know there's some performers that have a certain thing they do, but I'm not the one that wants to create those things, because then when you're not able to do those, yeah. like make sure you have 10 minutes with your eyes closed or anything, like I don't believe in it. So I just have a normal day, wake up, have breakfast, and then go in and do the show. Keep it cash. Um, keep it cash. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't tend to do a marathon or anything before it. I tend to do. You know, I do tend to rest <laughs> to some degree during the day. Um, I think my. I've always loved sleep, but um, I. Uh, I do definitely. If I've had a bad night's sleep, it's a. It's a somewhat bad show or a difficult show for me. Um, I think if I don't get a, a really good night's sleep, I do find that my voice can tend to um, have a hard time, and I find yeah. that my energy levels go. I, I. I don't worry about what I eat at the minute, not that I ever really did, but um, uh, but you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, if it's a huge pasta, it's a huge pasta, and that's what it is, you know, with extra garlic bread, that's fine, because I'm gonna work it off um, in three hours of running around in those black outfits. So um, I sort of don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't overthink it. I think that, I think people have gone before me, if they have, I think they actually probably find it harder if you overthink and yeah. sort of worry too much about it. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it's not heart surgery, as we always say. You know, you're mm. not saving lives. You're just trying to make someone's life that day a bit happier. So you've just got to remember that, really. But yeah, I don't, I'm the same. I don't have an awful lot of rituals. I just like eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, given the number of shows you do per week, I, I can see why you need your sleep, and I can see why uh, extra energy from past or extra garbage. Yeah, oh, God. So Get the carbs go. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley, what about you? What? I do have to watch what I eat just because, you know, otherwise I'm not going to get in those little tights. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's going to be a, you know, a sight for sore eyes. So, uh, yeah, I do go to the gym every day and I like to, you know, eat quite healthily. Um, other than that, I don't really sleep that much anyway, so um, <laughs> so I don't need that. And then uh, I just like to play some loud music before I go on, really, just to get in the mood and, and have a bit of a dance about it. I'm not sure the creatives always like it when they knock on the dressing room door and they're like, trying to give me a note and I'm like, yeah! <laughs> So now, now the follow-on question clearly is, what music are you listening to oh. that causes people to say, oh, what's going on? Got quite an eclectic. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I have a quite a range. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't, you know, I, like, I, I would listen to everything, but I do, before a show, I do quite like listening to a bit of hip-hop and grime. Yeah. You know? Amazing, amazing. <laughs> hip-hop and grime. I don't even know what grime is. <laughs> Grime. So yeah, yeah. Oh, I could talk about grime for hours. Could you? <laughs> oh yeah. I don't yeah. even. I sing us a bit. I haven't got a clue either. I'll right. play some. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So perhaps after the show, we'll all listen to some hip hop and grime. Yeah. I'll type that into iTunes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> grime. Type it into Google. Hey. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So we've talked a little bit about how it's a female-centered show, and you brought that out, Bradley, but what's it like actually playing these tremendously interesting, complex women? Um, Amazing. Um, I actually feel like you teach an audience things that you learn in the show. I learn stuff about being a woman throughout the show and how, if, if you've not seen the show, Glinda, she's from a very, um, from a background where she gets everything her own way, and she thinks that's how life's always going to be, and she goes to school, and you find out that school isn't isn't as easy as being at home mm. with your lovely mother and father who give you everything. So you learn that you don't always get your own way. And I think that's a great lesson to teach people. Young, I love it when children come because I think children look at it a different way to adults as well. Um, so to impose those lessons is, is quite special. And I learn all the time in the show. So yeah, it's special. Wonderful. Um, well, Alphabet, the, the, the part is, is a fight, it's a, it's a, you're constantly fighting from the moment you sort of get on stage. So um, it's um, in, in many ways the, the draining sort of quality that you have at the end of the show, especially in For, like, for Good, is, is very real because of the fight that you're constantly, you're playing for two and a half hours. It's a fight to, well, be normal. Um, uh, is uh, is that from the second she walks on, you know. So um, I find it draining in a really positive way, if that's the thing, um, because that fight and brings out actually wonderful things for her, a friendship that she'll never forget, um, the love of her life, 
uh, you know, so she gets a lot out of out of those fights, as well as yeah. losing an awful lot at the same time. But the, the story, we always get quite um, emotional by for yeah, good, and I think it's because it's we have been through an awful lot, and we've played the um, we've played our stories full out. You know, we've we've really gone through the motions and really had to, you know, uh, emote and. Um, yeah, and I think fight is the, is the classic word for me. It's, you know, we've had to sort of, we've go through so much yeah. that that is an amazing sort of feeling to play. And although we might be tired and although we might need to eat a giant pasta at the end of the show, <laughs> um, it feels like you've really, it's, it's really worth it for the story that you've told. And, um, and to try and change people's perspe um, perspectives on it, you know, that it's really nice that to sort of go, you didn't think that was going to happen, did you? Or you didn't think she was like that, did you? really good. I'm really pleased that you have come out going, oh my god. There was one show recently that I popped up at the, um, well, at the very, very end, and so everyone just like, just, oh yay! Like, everyone just went, ah! Oh! And it was just, you know, in that moment, you just go, yeah, thanks guys, you were with us, you know, and it's yeah. just, you know, so when you have moments like that, you know, it's just great, and um, uh, it, it, yeah, it's really, it's such, a, it's such a ride. It's such a, you know, an exhausting ride that it's so worth it for every, for every moment you get from the audience. I think one of the other biggest lessons, especially at the end of the show when you listen to For Good, is about forgiveness and forgiving mm. friends because we've got such a strong friendship in the show. We come over all the hurdles of not liking each other and, we, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. we actually realise we are two completely different people who just love each other because, because we're so different and then Sorry. we have all these things she runs off with the love of my life as well. Not to give the story away, but that is giving the story away. But, um, <laughs> but then at the end, you realise that friendship is more important than forgiveness and that we, we do have this strong bond that's more important than the things that have tried to separate us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that real life is messy, right? Nobody is perfectly like, exactly. good. Exactly. Nobody yeah, is yeah, messy. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. No life is so perfect. True. No. Um, and it's how you... <laughs> <laughs> And it's, and it's how you deal with that yeah. and come out the other end that's the most important thing, which is yeah. exactly what this story is. Yeah. Oh, super. What do you like most and least about your characters? Cool. Most and least? Yes. Go on, Brad. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So clearly you're, you're gorgeous, right? Yeah. Like, let, let's be serious. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh, you are? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Um, I don't know. I, I, I do love the way that he just I think the carefree way of life, I think, I've, I've learnt a lot, and that sounds a bit weird to say that you've learnt a lot from a character, but I've learnt a lot about my, myself through playing Fiero and just, have, you know, just allowing yourself to be a bit more relaxed and taking each day as it comes and, and being a bit more carefree. And if people say, do you want to do this? You go, yeah, rather than just kind of being uptight. And, you know, I think in our business as well, like Alice said, you can kind of get so... Like I need to do this. I need to be perfect every night, and I need to, you know, your standards are still there. But you know, you've got to give yourself a bit of a break in 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 all kind of walks of life. You know, like as as actors, obviously we care so much, but you want to be perfect every time, and sometimes you you, you can't. Do you know what I mean? And I think he, I've learnt a lot from that. And then uh, he's negative, so I don't know. Maybe the, his choice of of clothing. Maybe. <laughs> no? You know, that's that's something to be. Uh, yeah, I'll say maybe that. I thought I looked like pants. They're great. But I mean, I'm in I'm in ladies' jeans now, so I can't really complain. <laughs> I don't know how you top that one. I'm I'm just saying. Oh, um, I like because um, I don't think it's a trait that I actually have as a person. Um, so I like that she will stand up no matter what and say when something is wrong. I'm someone that tends to go, I don't like that, but I'm going to think of what would happen if I say that I don't like it. And I sort of think of the options that what would happen afterwards. Mm -hmm. Elphaba doesn't. It's like, I don't like that, I'm saying something about it. You know, she doesn't think of the consequences of those. And although that might mean a lot of bad stuff happens to her during the show for that reason, I think that's an amazing thing to just go, no, I don't, I don't believe in that or I don't trust that and that's wrong. And so I'm going to instantly say something about that. I think that's amazing. Um, uh, her uh, negatives, she just runs around too much and it's tiring. She just like, just <laughs> like, it's constant. I'm just, you know, it's just, 
It's just never ending. That's the only negative. I think she's a brilliant character. I think there's a lot of things that I'd love to take from her in life. Um, I, you know, there's not many. Not it's not many. Neg I don't even see I don't being think green there are as a negative. With both the girls. No. I don't think even being green oh. is, I see as a negative. I think it's fabulous. I mean, in fact, I think I look better green. You look so, fantastic. I, I do. I look better green. You look amazing. I, we'll, we'll come back to green in a second, but I'd <laughs> love to know what Sophie has to say about her character. Micah, I, I love how happy she is. I love, I'm a very smiley, happy person, so I love that I get to be that on stage. Sometimes when you're feeling a bit tired, it is hard to be smiley. And my face at the start of the run, <laughs> I had to get a massage. My face was killing. <laughs> and I'm constantly like this. So I, I couldn't get it down. I was like, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. I love that I get to be happy and positive. The only negative for me, it, it, it's related to the costumes. They are so heavy mm. that my body is is a bit so. Um, so that's the only thing. If I could just make them a little bit lighter. They are right. tremendous costumes. They're amazing. And for those of you who have or haven't seen the show, like I, I don't know how you move in those skirts, right? Like oh my yeah, God, they're I know the. the it is and it's so tight and it's right on your hips and it pulls right down and the stage is like this and I'm in heels so my body's just a bit like what are you doing <laughs> but but I look great it's fine yeah exactly they're gorgeous yeah. absolutely gorgeous um so you're green Alice uh, when you're alpha but you're not green at the moment you look very nice uh, though you do seem to have green nail varnish on yeah because I've got off green nails. exactly exactly <laughs> so, what's the makeup routine like and then how do you get it all off mm, yes um <laughs> Uh, with a challenge, if you look closely, I'm sure you'll go, oh, actually, you've not done very well um, getting it off last night. But uh, so I have to get in a bit earlier than everyone, so I have to get in about uh, half an hour earlier than everyone to uh, start the makeup routine. Um, and uh, Act 1 is a little bit slightly different to Act 2 makeup, so uh, they don't have to do an awful lot of eye makeup on me, for instance. It's quite literally just green, really, and a bit of mascara. Um, and then Act Two, it gets much darker. And so they've sort of, it, it's not too bad. I thought it was gonna be much worse um, than the time that it takes. They've got it down to a fine art, I think. Um, how do I get it off? Um, weirdly, baby shampoo works really, really well. I don't know what's in baby shampoo, um, but you just get like, basically a scrubbing brush and baby shampoo and you go for it um, <laughs> for about 10 minutes. And uh, it all eventually comes off. It is water-based makeup, so um, it is willing to come off. But yeah, I mean, after a two-show day, that's really bedded into that skin and those pores. So uh, I, I think it wasn't that long ago, actually. And after a two-show day, I had a really full shower, like did, you know, good 20 minutes, scrubbed everything off, went home and got, went, this is my partner, by the way, uh, went, oh, not done very well getting that off tonight. Did you rush? <laughs> oh, no. And like, you know, a single <laughs> tear trickles down my face <laughs> as I went, no. I, I just spent 20 minutes in the shower. <laughs> um, so sometimes it depends on, on um, I think, how long you've had it on for that day. But yeah, it, it does come off if you're, if you're <laughs> stable enough to, to go through the scrubbing. Um, but the skin suffers slightly, but that's just, it's worth it. Mm, where they are. Uh, we're going to turn to audience questions in a few minutes. I've got one more that I'd like to ask the cast. If you have a question, um, please go to the microphone in the center of the room now. Um, so I've got kind of, a, I guess, a general acting question. Uh, about your most memorable moments on stage, whether it's in this show or perhaps another, uh, what are they? Uh, During the show? Any show. Is it this show? Is it one of your first shows, maybe when you were starting out? I've, when got, I've, got, I've got, it's related to Wicked because it's Wizard of Oz. It's children when I listen. So I was in the show and obviously we had a real life dog. I was Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz, which was brilliant. I had a real life dog, Toto who was very well behaved most of the time. But one show, he must have had like spicy dinner or something. Because oh oh he dear. decided to go to the toilet on stage. <gasps> oh and a little no. munchkin had to run off, get a little pooper scooper, <laughs> run back on, and he stole the show. Yeah, so. Big round of applause. It, it, yeah. He always got the biggest applause at the end of the show. He ran on. <laughs> he did nothing. I just fed him ham the whole show. <laughs> and he got the applause. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> That was funny. I can't think of one. Can you? Mm, not most. I can only think of things that have gone wrong in my past in different shows, like people 
like things not working or something. That's all I can think of. But even then, I think there's the question around resilience, right? How do you bounce back from that? How do you take that to be something? I don't let it get to me too much if something goes wrong. It's it's you have to sort of brush it off because if you get annoyed about it, then it's going to get you know it's sort of like exactly. point of energy. That's what's exciting about live theatre. Do you know what I mean? That's you know, yeah. It keeps it fresh for you and the audience. You know, and it's your job to hopefully make sure the audience are not aware of uh, a mistake that does yeah. happen. You know, but they okay. things happen, but. You know, like you say, it's, it's well, our job. Once there wasn't a wig, when I was in Shrek, this is in Shrek, um, I pointed to Bradley because we did Shrek together, Shrek the musical together. Um, and uh, yeah, there wasn't a wig, and I was doing this really quick change, and oh my God, this fear that suddenly crossed the, uh, the wig lady, uh, Paula, and she just went, I've not got your wig. And I just went, Let's improvise. And so I got this like shawl that, I, that, that was on the set. I just went, don't worry, I'll just use this. And because uh, we had no time to go and get a wig. And so we just threw this round. I just went and did this scene <laughs> and then came back off. And she just was like, in tears, I'm so sorry. And I was just like, that was quite fun for me. I made it work. <laughs> you know, it, so it, things like that I quite like. Um, as long as they're not dangerous and they don't, you know, no one will have noticed. I don't think anyone noticed. I think I even had people in that night. And I went, oh, did you see me with no wig? And they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, we always notice it way more because we know it's not the norm. Yeah. Um, but actually, an audience, you know, would very, very rarely, unless they, they're there every sort of day, which there are some that are, <laughs> um, uh, you know, would notice it. Um, I, yeah, it's, I, quite, I generally quite like it if things go wrong because it makes me sort of go, oh, how do I deal with the situation? What do I have to yeah. do and improvise? You have to use your brain. Yeah, you have to use your brain suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, Bradley, any memorable moments? And then we've got some questions in the audience. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you get those ones, but then there's also those times where, you know, as, as actors and you've been working hard to get to your dreams and, your, and, you know, we've all been under studies as well. And, you know, when we get that, that chance to go on, I remember the first time I ever played Jean Valjean and I, I cried for like two hours. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, I've played Jean Valjean. Like, <laughs> and my mum was there and stuff. But then I, I remember when you get the phone call to... to to play Fiera, I was just, I, you know, you get so overwhelmed because that is your dreams come true. So, you know, you have those those memorable moments where things go wrong and you have to deal with it, but then you, you get those moments of el pure elation where you're just kind of like, wow, it's it's happened. And and that's what's exciting about being a, a performer and an actor at the moment. Oh, amazing. I'll turn it over to the audience questions now. Um, my, my question is around backstage and how, how confusing it is and how organized it is because there's monkeys everywhere. There's <laughs> like a zoo, <laughs> like just, they're just running around. <laughs> I'm just wondering what goes backstage. Oh, it's like a circus, yeah. but in a good way. Like it's very much I've got, it's I've controlled got chaos. Some really quick changes and the work that goes on backstage. So I, when I come off, the first time I leave the stage in the big bubble dress, I then have to get changed into this little suit to be a student at Chiz, and there's about six people mm. just taking my wig off, taking my shoes off, taking my dress off, putting me in a different costume, and it happens in about, it must be about five, six seconds, because I've got time to spare where I can have a drink and things like that. And it's just amazing. The people backstage are so on it. It's so rehearsed and so well thought through. The, the, well, I think I if you saw it as an outsider, you would, you would literally think it was absolutely crazy oh, and it is chaos amazing. but it's, so it's like a, a well machined chaos. well oiled machine and yeah. every, you know we've got such like Sophie said we've got an incredible backstage crew yeah. and and wigs and costume and everyone knows their job and everyone's doing their track to the best ability and everything just moves so fluid. you can't really have like someone come and stand in the wings and watch because that will instantly uh, disrupt the flow of the things coming off, people coming off, they've got certain directions they need to go to get a really quick change done. Uh, while they've, as soon as they pass then someone brings something over here, the so then that's flying, flying, that something's flying up, something's coming in. If you're in that way, then you know, you can't be so, you, you, you just can't, it, it's perfectly, I mean, it's, it's now, it's an, a, a well-oiled machine, but um, you know, it's all perfectly planned. This is why techs are there. We have a, a technical rehearsal always before shows. And, that's why they're there, is to work out how this can work perfectly and what needs to happen at what point. Um, so yes, it does look like a madhouse, absolutely. Um, but from our eye, it's, we know exactly what, you can see what's going on. It's amazing, it's very well done. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I, can't, I, I imagine uh, the Apollo's an old theater, right? So I imagine there's not a lot of space back there either, which makes it Oh, I've worked more. in much less space, actually. Um, I actually think it's quite, I mean, there is a lot of scenery and there is a lot of mm. set that has to go up in order to release space down. Yep. So yeah, they use height as opposed to 
width and depth maybe yeah. um, but um, <clears throat> but it, it, again it's just perfectly timed it's so well you wouldn't notice I don't I, I never even notice what they do it's amazing yeah. amazing amazing next question hi there hi um, I'm interested to know what happens once the show's all finished. So do you start auditioning for a new show or do you have some downtime or do you travel with the show or, yeah. I'm just it can be any happens. of those options. Yeah, literally all of them. <laughs> you or you don't them. know. Yeah. Like, we would all assume, unless you want a bit of time off, audition for a new show or TV or whatever you wanted to do, but there's no guarantee you'll ever work again. Yeah. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> There is isn't. It there is really that. isn't. It's yeah. not. It's yeah. really, it's really fickle. But um, uh, yeah, you start. You've always got a contract, so you always know sort of your end date, um, as it were. Um, whether that extends further than that, you just don't know. But um, so yeah, as you get closer to that, if something's available after that end date, then yeah, you start auditioning for it, with the um, just sincere hope that you get it. Um, <laughs> uh, I do always like. I, I, I've been working for about 13 years now and um, I always go through a phase that once I'm getting towards the end of a job I want my evenings back and I start going oh I really can't wait to watch Coronation Street <laughs> at 7.30 you know what I mean so you sort of get that feeling and you, you go oh I'm going to do that for a while and, and maybe you fill your day with whatever work you do you know sessions or whatever or items I teach a lot and, um, and then I do that for a couple of weeks and I go now I'm ready to give my life back to a show again now. Do you know what I mean? So you take your, so, you, so I go through that cycle every single time, pretty much. And I've done that every single time. If someone said to me, Alice, you finish on Saturday night and Monday you start that, I'd be like, oh, OK. <laughs> because, <laughs> because actually that's not ideal for me. I do like to have a bit of a break. Not because I don't love theatre in any way, just well, it's because it's good for the, I think it's yeah. good for the brain mm. to have that change up because it makes you appreciate each time when you go back into a show. That's just my, my thing. Uh, well, kind of touching on that, I mean, I, I've been very, very, very lucky since uh, I did Shrek with Alice. I, I did Shrek and then the, I finished that on the Saturday and on the Monday I started Ghost. I finished that on the Saturday uh, and I started um, Les Mis on the Monday and then I did that and then did the Wicked on tour and then finished that and went straight into this. So I, I actually, since we did Shrek in 2012, I've not had a... Someone's That's talented. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just been a lucky thing. I don't because you're talented. talented. <laughs> I no, just, just really talented. more talented than you are, OK? <laughs> <laughs> well done, Bradley. It's not that. I'm just saying. What can I say? I'm just saying, but I would sometimes really like a bit of downtime. <laughs> What's Coronation Street? Stop being so talented. <laughs> Getting all the jobs from everyone else. <laughs> no, but, yeah... I don't know. There could be a job that starts on a Monday. That's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's, what's the ramp up into a new show like? So if you're st because you're talented, you stop on Saturday and you start again on Monday. <laughs> In, into, 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 shows, into shows that have been running for a long time. How do you ramp up? How do you get going? How does that work? You, well, usually you are uh, either double up or oh. you, you'd start yeah, up. So you'd do the... You would do the uh, maybe four weeks of a different show in the day and then you do your, your show in the evening oh of a my. different show. Yeah, and the brain. Um, never happened to me, though. <laughs> or if you're doing, like, even if you're doing a cast change, you know, when people have stayed on for Wicked and stuff and doing an extra year, you'll be doing your rehearsal with the new cast in the daytime until 5 o'clock or 4.30, then you have a couple of hours off and then you do your show, and that would happen for four to five weeks. Um, if you are lucky and it, maybe it is a different show that actually the rehearsals start on the Monday, then, you know, you, you do have your quite lucky that you have the evenings free um, but it, it, it kind of it is a, a bit of a jigsaw I think mm. between the shows and, and your rehearsals and, and, and how it's kind of placed really. I think sometimes when you're doing a new show or you're rehearsing something it, your brain sort of instantly goes because we're quite creative minds we've got creative mm. so actually it's really nice because you go oh my god I think about something else I think about a new story a new character new intentions new drives you know so actually sometimes it can be really quite beneficial for, for if you've done something for a long period of time because it does sort of wake you back up again into being um, a bit creative oh, super <laughs> and one last question what about your dream role on stage that you've not had the chance to play <laughs> um, the little mermaid would be mine oh but she has a roller skate, and I, as I said, I'm really clumsy, so I don't know if that's a good idea. 
I'd love for try to try. <laughs> um, well, well, Alphabet was a big one for me. Um, had been for many, many years. Um, it, to be honest, a part that I'd love to play is, is one that I can never play because it's a man's role. But I would love to play Jean Valjean. <laughs> if I, if I could, if we could, just ignore the fact that I was a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the part that I choose to play. Yeah. Um, well, I was very lucky enough to play that role, and that was yes, well, always right, a dream. Um, uh, but if, if anything else, I'd love to play the Phantom in Phantom of the Opera one day. You Next will. job, let's face you it. Will. You've just said it now. <laughs> and you're so talented, <laughs> you'll start on the Monday. I'll start on the Monday, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you will. And but I do hope to see uh, you continue in your roles in Wicked for perhaps a little longer yet. <laughs> um, Wicked is at the Apollo Theatre near Victoria. Many, many thanks to Sophie Evans, Alice Fern, and Bradley Jaden. The really talented one. Very talented person. Thank you very much for joining us. I think the cast will uh, pose for some pictures now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>